Ah, the Black Scorpion. Here's an example of an idea starting off with a little promise, but it slowly turns into something that wasn't originally intended. For those unaware, the Black Scorpion was a mysterious masked superstar in WCW who had some sort of history with the man called Sting. Fans eagerly awaited details in regards to the identity of the Black Scorpion, but not only that, WCW fans could maybe learn more about their most beloved superstar and what kind of past he had. There was potential here to do something worthwhile. It started off not too dissimilar to the Kane revelation in the WWF during 1997, a mysterious entity from a superstar's past coming back to get revenge, but trust me, the Black Scorpion was nothing like The Undertaker's younger brother. A lack of clear direction and some problems backstage would result in this storyline pretty much getting shit canned, with the big reveal getting changed into something a bit more predictable. Let's take a look at the Black Scorpion in WCW. We're going to go all the way back to 1990 for today's episode. Jim Hurd is the executive vice president of World Championship Wrestling while Ole Anderson books the shows. As we know, Jim Hurd got a lot of criticism due to his efforts to turn WCW into another WWF with cartoony gimmicks aimed at a younger audience. His gimmicks were not only cartoony, but some of them were downright silly. Ole Anderson, someone who concerned himself more with the old school style of wrestling booking, got frustrated with Hurd making changes to shows and wanting Ole to rebook events that had already been laid out. And it was through these frustrations that the Black Scorpion was born. All this information comes from Anderson's RF video shoot interview, by the way. One day, Ole presented Hurd with a booking sheet. Hurd wanted it rewritten, so Anderson went back to his office and he wrote down Black Scorpion and Sting, not knowing what this was going to be. Anderson said Hurd got a look at the new sheet and he said, Now you're learning. Anderson said, because I put down the Black Scorpion, he thought that was the answer. I had no idea what the Black Scorpion was going to be. I had no idea, no idea at all. So just from hearing a more gimmicky name, Hurd thought this was going to be a great idea and Anderson now had the task of creating this Black Scorpion character. You gotta keep in mind too that this could very well be Anderson trying to save face and kinda push the blame over to someone else, because Ole was also fired the day this whole Black Scorpion thing came to an end and many believe it was this storyline that sealed Anderson's fate. To be fair, the name works. Sting, Scorpion, you know what I mean. The name was there and it already got green lit, but now Anderson had to create the character. He had to find someone to play the character and he had to come up with a story and a reason for this character wanting to face Sting, the NWA world champion at the time. Jim Ross said Ole Anderson was dismissive when asked about the Black Scorpion. Ross said that Anderson told him he didn't give a shit and he'd figure it out. It is a problem though, introducing new characters is fine and it happens all the time, but this character is going up against the company's top babyface. This is something that needs to hit its target because eventually, the company would need to have the Black Scorpion vs Sting match and people would also be expected to pay for that match. The fact that Anderson didn't know what was going on and the fact that, according to Jim Ross, he didn't care either, that's an immediate red flag right there. Sting had just defeated Nature Boy Ric Flair at the 1990 Great American Bash for the world title and the fans were overjoyed that their hero finally won the big gold belt. A month later, towards the end of 1990, Sting got interviewed by Bob Cottle and Bob, out of nowhere, reveals that Sting has signed on to face the mysterious Black Scorpion at Clash of the Champions 12 in Asheville, North Carolina. Sting says he's seen a video clip featuring the Black Scorpion and he has no idea who this guy is. Sting says he's struggling to prepare for an unknown challenger, but he has to go for broke and defend the NWA championship against anyone who steps up. Sting then shares the video that he watched for fans at home and have a listen. Sting, are you listening? <laughs> of course you are. That's Ole Anderson right there and he's also doing his classic Shockmaster voice and I know the Shockmaster was after this but it'll forever be known as the Shockmaster voice. We'll see you at the Fall Brawl. So here's what the Black Scorpion says. Sting, are you- <laughs> only joking. Sting, are you listening? Of course you are. You're too much of a hero and a champion to refuse to hear this tape. Sting, I'm going to destroy you. A long time has passed since the last time you saw me. 
Oh yes, you know me, or at least you did. But don't try to track me down, it won't help. Even if you saw my face in the light, you wouldn't recognize me. My face doesn't look the same. Curious? I imagine you are, of course you are. I want you to be thinking, be concerning, maybe even a little scared. Soon, I intend for you to be terrified. Think back, who could it be that would hate you enough to want to see a broken, defeated man? Maybe a little clue could help. How about California in 86? Think about it, Sting. Think about who I am. Remember this, you'll have a chance to find out on September 5th at The Clash at Mountain Madness. I'll be there, waiting. So we've got a clue. California, 1986. Remember, Anderson had no clue at all how this was gonna play out, so this California 86 thing was thrown in there just to get fans talking. The Ultimate Warrior was the most common guess here, seeing as Sting started his career in all California championship wrestling as part of Power Team USA. Jim Justice Helwig was a part of the Power Team also, and this Ultimate Warrior thing would continue to get somewhat suggested as time went on, particularly by Jim Ross on commentary. As we all know though, Anderson had no clue what was going to come of this and, of course, the Ultimate Warrior hadn't signed with World Championship Wrestling. He was the WWF Champion at the time and he was also in the middle of the biggest run of his professional career. Dave Sheldon was another guest. He was a former training partner of Sting's. He was working in WCW at the time as the Angel of Death, so that one lined up pretty well. Just to confirm, by the way, Sheldon did indeed wrestle as the Black Scorpion and he had matches against Sting while using the Black Scorpion gimmick. However, Sheldon only portrayed the character at house shows. WCW fans had a mystery on their hands. Those who presented this mystery had no clue where it was going to go. But still, younger fans would have been captivated by this stuff. Even looking back now, it started really well. Yes, it's hard to get over Anderson's Shockmaster voice, but the intrigue was definitely there. And while many NWA traditionalists would have turned their backs on this from day one, there was enough mystery surrounding the Black Scorpion to get that young demographic excited for what was to come next. Before the Clash of the Champions, the Black Scorpion cut another promo. Sting, how has your week been? <laughs> how has your week been? Figured out who I am yet? No, I didn't really think you would. I could tell you, but why? I want you to be scared. I want you to wonder. I want you to look behind you. Check in the closet. Check behind the bed. Sting, on the 5th at Mountain Madness, we may both find what we're looking for. I'll tell you what, if you beat me, I'll tell you my name. If I beat you, it won't matter because you'll be in no shape to care. Enough for now, Sting. Think about it in one more week. September 5th, Mountain Madness. I'll be waiting for you. Good luck, Sting. Alright, let's look at Clash of the Champions Mountain Madness. Fall Brawl 90. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Sting vs the Black Scorpion is our main event. Before the match, Tony Schiavone lets us know that the Black Scorpion sent in another message. He says... We have both waited and now the time is at hand. Sting, if you can beat me, I'll tell you and all the world who I am. A concerned Stinger says he's taking this very seriously. He wants to get to the ring, get this done and get this whole thing straightened out. The Black Scorpion makes his entrance first and he's wearing a black robe. The cameras stay behind the Black Scorpion so we have no idea who this guy is. Sting makes his entrance, he gets in the ring. And it looks like the Black Scorpion's gonna wear a mask throughout the whole match. This is not the Ultimate Warrior, by the way, that's for sure. The two have a back and forth matchup that you can't really enjoy because you're wondering who this guy is. The mystery surrounding the Black Scorpion is bigger than the match itself. Sting tries multiple times to remove the mask, but he's unsuccessful. The Stinger ends up winning the match after a Stinger splash, and the Scorpion gets unmasked after the bell. He won the match with a Stinger! He's got another mask on! A mask under a mask. Fantastic. Another Black Scorpion appears on the rampway, so it looks like Sting didn't even wrestle the true Black Scorpion. He wrestled someone else. Truth be told, the guy who worked the match was Al Perez, a guy who'd done a great deal of work with Jim Crockett Promotions and World Class throughout 87, 88 and 89. Towards the end of 89, he joined the World Wrestling Federation where he became a job guy, and now he was back in WCW as the Black Scorpion. 
The plan was to have Perez continue on as this Black Scorpion character, but it was also reported that Al didn't want to continue portraying the Black Scorpion because he felt it was damaging his career. It's not like Al Perez is remembered today as an absolute megastar of the business, so maybe the Black Scorpion wouldn't have been as bad as Perez initially thought, but anyway, two Black Scorpions. Sting says afterwards that he failed his mission tonight, he didn't find out the identity of the Black Scorpion, but Sting has another big problem heading to the ring, Sid Vicious. Sid says he wants a shot at the world title, and Sting tells Sid to speak with the championship committee, the champ's too busy with all this Black Scorpion stuff. Sting tries to walk away, but he gets attacked by Big Sid, and Sid says afterwards that he's gonna become the next world champion. So, Sting vs Black Scorpion would begin taking place at house shows with Sting trying to unmask the Scorpion to reveal his identity. Al Perez played the role just one more time inside the squared circle, and the other times, the Black Scorpion was played by a multitude of different people. This included people with different body shapes, there was different attires, and there was even different masks used. With Perez announcing he didn't want to portray the Scorpion anymore, he didn't make any further appearances on WCW television, and this of course meant Ole Anderson had to come up with something else. You'd think that the Black Scorpion vs Sting match would take place at Halloween Havoc, it kind of fit the theme, but the Sting vs Sid match would happen at the pay per view instead while Anderson tried to figure out what to do next with the Black Scorpion, and this is when things turn a little silly. On the next episode of World Championship Wrestling, the Stinger said he has no idea who this guy is, and Ross reminded fans that it was an alleged Black Scorpion who Sting defeated, not the real one. We're reminded of California 1986, and then we get another Black Scorpion promo. Sting, I'm making a little present for you, everybody else wants to take from you, but I want to give. In a while I may even show you what it is, but first I want to give you another clue. Los Angeles 86, on the beach. Think about it, I hope as I intend that you're slowly losing your mind. One thing you must remember, while everybody, including the horsemen, are chasing you, there's a big difference. Sid wants your belt, I want your life. The next week, Sting would say something's clicking and he might have an idea who this is. Previous Black Scorpion promos get aired and Sting says he's close to solving the mystery, but he isn't 100% sure. The next week, the Black Scorpion sent in another video. This time he talked about how Sting's always confident, but the mystery of the Scorpion was making the champion lose control. Scorpion says Sting's face wasn't one of control at the clash, Sting's maybe losing his mind with all this pressure. The Black Scorpion says once again he will face Sting and if Sting wins, all will be revealed. And again he says Sid wants the title but the Scorpion wants Sting's life. We go to the arena where Sting gets interviewed, he repeats what he said last week, he's very close to working out who this is, but then the Scorpion appears in the audience and he's looking over at the Stinger. Sting fails in catching the Scorpion and solving the mystery once and for all. While all this was going on, Sting continued to have matches against the Black Scorpion at house shows, and again, the size of the Black Scorpion would change along with the mask. Anyone who was available would wrestle as the Black Scorpion. The next week we have another Black Scorpion promo, and honestly, there's not much point in going over what he says, he's repeating the same stuff he said weeks prior. The Stinger gets brought out for an in-ring interview where he talks about dealing with both the Scorpion and Sid. Sid comes out wanting to fight the champ at that very moment, and then the Black Scorpion jumps in the ring and uh, he, he puts up his arms like a spooky ghost or a zombie or something. Flan Brian ends up saving the Stinger and it looks like the Black Scorpion has no idea what he's supposed to do. Sting tries to grab the mystery man but Scorpion escapes, so no face reveal tonight folks. By the way, the Black Scorpion would have a match with Flan Brian and the Black Scorpion would win. The next week, Gordon Soley got an interview with the Black Scorpion but… <laughs> He, he, he had to wear a blindfold while conducting the interview. Gordon says this is the most demeaning thing he's ever done. The Scorpion says this is being done to keep his identity a secret. No shit. Soli wants to know why Scorpion hasn't revealed himself and Scorpion says he wants to drive Sting mad. And the Scorpion wants Gordon to ask Sting about Tulsa. So that's California, LA on the beach and now Tulsa. 
Tulsa was the home of Bill Watts' Mid-South Wrestling or the Universal Wrestling Federation where Sting and Jim Helwig started teaming up as the Blade Runners. So once again, were WCW really teasing fans with the Ultimate Warrior? Gordon Soley gets himself out of the Scorpions, uh, I guess it's a lair. The Black Scorpion then kept quiet for a few weeks while the commentary team carried the story, presumably because no one knew what to do and where to go with the story. And then we arrive at Halloween Havoc and the Black Scorpion returned to play mind games with the Stinger. This is when it goes from silly to downright ridiculous. After the opening match at Halloween Havoc, Sting cuts a promo inside the arena and he's all fired up, even though he's been under quite a lot of pressure recently. The Black Scorpion appears behind him and he says he wants to show Sting a sample of his black magic. Yeah, the Scorpion grabs a female crew assistant, he puts her in a cage, Pyro goes off and the curtain around the cage falls down. Both the crew guard and the Scorpion have vanished. A few seconds later, well, they appear on the other side of the stage. This is one of the shittest magic tricks you'll ever see, and Paul Heyman has the unfortunate task of trying to sell it afterwards. More bullshit follows in the Sid vs Sting match, where Barry Windham dresses up as a fake Sting mid-match and he lets Sid pin him. The crowd thought Sting just lost the title, but the real Sting came back out and Sid got pinned, resulting in the Stinger retaining the heavyweight title. So now, this mystery man was also a practitioner of black magic. Brilliant. And this wasn't a one-time thing either. Oh no, the Black Scorpion would show us more magic tricks, as Ole Anderson clearly let his imagination get the better of him. Wrestling fans just love seeing magic tricks. In fairness though, as mentioned earlier, younger fans may have liked this, but any appeal the gimmick may have had to older fans was quickly beginning to disappear. The Scorpion agreed to meet Sting once again, but there were a few conditions. After putting over his awesome black magic, the Black Scorpion said his first condition was that this next meeting had to happen on national TV with the biggest audience possible, so it was going to take place at the next class show. The second condition, the Black Scorpion wanted to conduct his interview inside the safety of a cage. Doesn't make him sound very intimidating, does it? In the last condition, the Black Scorpion wanted the opportunity to show off his black magic again. Fucking hell. Sting agrees to all stipulations. We get to the class show, Thanksgiving Thunder. Sting's getting interviewed by Paul E. And there he is, the Black Scorpion, grabbing some poor bastard from the audience and performing magic tricks. Clearly it's a plant and the guy in question makes this very obvious, and because Sting agreed to the stipulations, there's nothing he can do about it. The quote audience member gets turned into a tiger, and the black scorpion then stands in his own cage and he just disappears. Oli's voiceover says the black scorpion will see the stinger at Starcade, so it looks like Sting will finally get his hands on the real black scorpion at WCW's biggest show of the year, thank god. It's been reported that magician Franz Harari, H Harari, I don't know. This guy was the Black Scorpion performing all these magic tricks at Halloween Havoc and Clash of the Champions. The next week, the Black Scorpion talked while Sting wrestled the match. It didn't matter much because Sting still got a victory. But then the Black Magic came into play and the Scorpion started possessing people. These possessions would lead to Sting getting attacked and I'm not fucking kidding either. From referees to fans at ringside, no one was safe from the Black Scorpion's evil Black Magic. What's also noteworthy is that the Black Scorpion's voice had now changed. Here I come, Sting. And then it changed again. You know me better than you think. Anderson suffered a broken arm around this time period too, so maybe he wasn't around to record the voiceovers. If we're to believe what Ole Anderson said, Dusty Rhodes had stepped in and Dusty took over the storyline. What happens at Starcade was also apparently all conjured up by Dusty Rhodes. It's the same old thing heading into Starcade. If Sting wins, we'll find out who the Scorpion is. If he doesn't, then Sting loses the world title and the mystery remains. On the episode of Main Event, The Day of Starcade, we got the final Black Scorpion promo. He said, Sting, we are just hours away from Starcade. Here is your final clue to my identity. Since you've started as a professional wrestler, you and I have been tag team partners. See you again.
We get to the big show and yes we do find out the identity of the Black Scorpion at Starcade 1990. Immediately after the match, the storyline stops, as does Ole Anderson's current employment. Sting vs the Black Scorpion is a steel cage match, Dick the Bruiser is our special guest referee, and the nonsense begins when a bunch of Black Scorpions head to the ring before the match begins. A kind of enclosure UFO looking thing comes down from the ceiling and it closes at the entranceway. It then opens up and this is the real Black Scorpion right here. You can tell as much because of his sick robe and because of Ole's voice that says there's only one true Black Scorpion. Yeah, it sounds like Ole's back doing the voiceover, but for a few weeks it was definitely someone else. Listen carefully at the start of the match and you'll hear people in the crowd cheer for the guy under the mask. They know who it is, even though he does everything possible to throw people off. You can definitely make a guess here though. I'm genuinely curious if anyone watching right now who doesn't know the identity was able to guess correctly just by looking at this image right here. Watch this match back after watching this video though. The guy under the mask pulls off moves he normally wouldn't do, and he did try to wrestle a different match. For a guy who gets accused of having the same match week in and week out, it's quite a sight to behold, but when you watch as much of this nonsense as I do, you're able to tell who it is just by the way he locks up. Sting eventually removes the mask, but the scorpion has another one on underneath. We can see some beach blonde hair too, so the jig was more or less up. Sting ends up winning with a splash from the top rope, but before he can take off the second mask, the other scorpions hit the ring. Eventually, Barry Windham and Arn Anderson hit the ring too, and Sting gets taken out. You start to think that the mask ain't coming off tonight, but here comes some baby faces to help Sting. Ricky Morton and Tom Zenk try to scale the cage, while the Steiners try to bust in with some bolt cutters. Sting wakes up, he manages to take the mask off, and it was nature boy Ric Flair. Think about this, what sense does this make? Ric Flair performing magic tricks and possessing people? This, as we've established, was not how the story was supposed to end, but fuck it, throw Ric Flair in there with a mask and get it over with. On the next episode of World Championship Wrestling on TBS, Flair said Sting had heard the voice of the Black Scorpion, but now he was hearing the voice of the Nature Boy. Rick was coming after Sting's world title, and that was the end of the Black Scorpion deal in WCW. Less than a month later, Flair defeated Sting for the World Championship, and the Black Scorpion wasn't mentioned again. The whole California 86 and Tulsa remarks were never brought up, it was completely forgotten about. Flair said Barry Windham was the first selection to play the Black Scorpion role at Starcade, but Flair stepped in, worried that it would hurt Barry's credibility. This leads us to believe that Flair knew that this was bad and he wanted to step in and take one for the team, so to speak. Heard wasn't a fan of Flair, we know that much. But it was rumoured too that Flair got the title again for stepping in at Starcade and portraying the Black Scorpion character at the last minute, though that's never been confirmed. There's a fine line in pro wrestling when dealing with supernatural characters. It's got to be really good or it's gonna be really bad. The Black Scorpion, I feel, started off with some promise but it quickly went over that fine line and it became a joke. It all happened so rapidly too. I mentioned this before but young fans would have gotten a kick out of this and I'm sure many of you viewing today might remember the mystery quite fondly, but the illusion gets shattered when we learn about how it all came together and the uncertainty surrounding the character. The black magic business too and the illusions performed on TV, that's the kind of stuff that makes the diehards shake their heads in disbelief. It's the WWF stuff done even worse than the WWF and that's an achievement in itself. Let me know your thoughts on the Black Scorpion though, do you think this could have been more or do you think it was doomed right from the beginning? It'll be interesting to hear your thoughts on the topic. Thanks for watching guys and take care.